It was just another day on Instagram, and I came across a new profile with the Instagram handle Positively Penelope. This page was dedicated to a two-year-old girl who was diagnosed with stage four high-risk neuroblastoma. The page was run by her mom and her dad and had reached 41,000 supporters. That day, I began following Penelope's journey and I witnessed her good days and her bad days. After a few months, the tumors in her head and in her eye and her brain had been growing significantly. And within a few days, unfortunately, Penelope passed away. Witnessing her parents grieving, I noticed that on their Instagram story, they posted, why only four? It wasn't until I did my research that I learned, according to Helio, published April 8th, 2019, only 4% of government funding goes towards childhood cancer research. We should all be acknowledging the seriousness of childhood cancer and advocating for the children who suffer from this awful disease by increasing funding. I have done significant research on this topic over the past few weeks. I also unfortunately know lots of people who have not only had cancer and survived it, but also unfortunately who have passed. I also perform violin for an organization called Sharing Notes, where I perform for hospital patients, some of which who have had cancer. I also have had the experience of following Penelope's journey on Instagram. According to the Global Public and Philanthropic Investment in Childhood Cancer Research, published in 2019, 75,000 children passed from cancer in 2019, 90% from low income, middle class families. We have the voice and the opportunity to advocate for children in any circumstance. Funding for more research could save 300,000 children daily worldwide, as stated by Alex's Lemonade Stand, published in 2020. We will first take out our th stethoscopes and listen to the pounding issues with current government funding. Next, measure why the government doesn't fund more for childhood cancer research. And finally, record some ways we can encourage more government funding and promote long, healthy lives for our children. According to Cancer Health, updated July 30th, 2019, the National Institutes of Health, NIH, the newly created NSF, and portions of other agencies emphasized funding mostly untargeted basic research. The government has lowered the importance of science-related research, which is about childhood cancer. Another factor is, according to the Sticky Policies, Dysfunctional Systems, published on June 11, 2020, breast cancer received the most funding by far, at $460 million, accounting for one-third of all cancer-specific nonprofit revenue. Only 4% is funded for childhood cancer, 4% of 5 billion. That makes 200 million, not even half of what's funded for breast cancer. Now that we understand the problems concerning the current childhood cancer funding situation and how it is harmful, we must shift our attention on just to just what causes these problems to continue thriving. According to Sticky Policies, Dysfunctional Systems, published on June 11th, 2020, science policy elites advocated for a system of funding that addressed what they perceived at the time as their most pressing problems of current science government relations. Without more funding for childhood cancer, there is less likely a possibility of any research breakthroughs to occur. To create a better treatment with less suffering for children, let alone even maybe a cure. According to the Morgan Adams Foundation, updated in 2021, one of the greatest obstacles we face in the effort to end pediatric cancer is lack of awareness. Unless someone has been personally affected by a child's experience with cancer, it is very difficult to understand the true reality of how many kids and families childhood cancer affects and of how mentally and physically traumatic kids' cancer is and of how utterly destructive and destructive cancer is to childhood childhood and family. Once a family hears their child has cancer, no one's life will ever, ever be the same. This is a combination of personal ignorance and lack of awareness. Unless your own child 
develops some sort of cancer, you are less likely to advocate for those children or for more government funding. With an understanding of why childhood cancer is significantly underfunded, we now need to fight the current system for the lives of these children suffering from such a terrible disease. These solutions come in both a national and a personal level. According to the International Collaboration to Save Children with Cancer, published January 7th, 2021, we suggest a multi-layered strategy involving one or more cancer centers, philanthropists, charitable organizations, and government agencies that would transcend medical issues to address some of the socioeconomic hardships faced by countries with limited resources. This approach is well exemplified by the collaborative programs established between medical centers and hospitals in China and St. Jude Children's Research Hospital since 1991 and, in our view, could provide a useful blueprint for saving the lives of thousands of children every year. Increasing organizations, such as cancer centers, philanthropists, charitable organizations, and government agencies, is the first step of the government to advocate for childhood cancer and begin more research and more knowledge. Another solution that is also personal could be simply by joining one of the walk or run events for cancer. These happen right in our neighborhood and we don't even know about it. Checking online for when the next walk or run is would be a great way to not only donate your time and your money to this organization, but also to get to know other people who care and who also might be suffering with a child that has cancer. Another solution is simply using social media. According to UCL Press, published in 2020, the initial development of social networking sites was, in effect, a scaling down of public broadcasting to become individuals posting to groups. Usually, these groups included not more than a few hundred people. In addition, the people who formed those groups would interact among themselves, for example, commenting upon the comments of others. Social media and the internet in general is a great space to advocate for children with cancer. This could be used on multiple levels, whether it's Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or many more. This is a wonderful time and opportunity that we can use the internet to advocate for the kids who may not have a voice. Today, we looked at the problems against funding for childhood cancer. Next, learned why nothing is being done to help the children suffering from this terrible disease. And finally, proposed some ways the government and ourselves can help save children's lives against cancer. According to ASCO, updated in 2021, the COVID-19 public health emergency threatens to reverse years of momentum. Labs conducting cancer research have closed as space has been redirected to COVID-19 research. Clinical trials have halted or slowed, creating a cost, costly loss in research programs and delays in patient access to potentially life-saving treatments. Due to the COVID-19 pandemic, Labs and researchers have been at a halt and have been unable to do more research on cancer as they've been focusing on coming up with a COVID-19 vaccine and researching for that. Now we need more than ever to pay attention to childhood cancer research and get the research back up and going. Together, we can make a difference to help young children like Penelope live long, healthy, and impactful lives. Thank you.